Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are joined once again by Leaping Lotus Wellness Center and so excited to have our next guest joining us today because she is back in rare form and we're excited to have her. Wait, and also I would say back here uh, on her show, but no, no, she's also back from India. We're going to find out more about this. Uh, Lena, <laughs> Lila uh, Carpenito joining us here once again. How are you? I'm doing so good, Jill. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Pleasure to have you back here and so glad to catch up to find out more about what's been going on in your life. And I know there's so much more to you. So it has been a while since we caught up. And I know there's a lot of preparation, as you mentioned, what's coming for 2024. So you returned from India. I want to hear about that. And I want to hear about, you know, more of the importance of using the Eastern and Western modalities in uh, the work that you're doing. So please introduce yourself. I'm just excited to have you. (laughs) I love you, Jill. You're so, oh, you're such a love. Um, hi, everybody. Yes, I'm back. I'm back a few days now from, I was gone for just about a month over in India. I was in South India and in Kerala. Um, I was finishing up the last portion of my Ayurvedic practitioner um, degree, and I can go into more detail about that. But I needed um I needed a certain amount of hours, like two hundred hours of um patient patient interaction. So it was it was actually pretty intense. Um, but uh, but I made it, and I am back. I'm here, and I've really been the past couple of years, especially since since the last time I saw you, Jill. Lots of busy stuff has happened. I know we talked a lot during COVID. We talked a lot over that time, and it's been a transition. And it's funny when I look back to the shows you and I did previously, like so much has happened, so much has evolved. Um, I'm really transitioning more into a virtual space as most people are these days. Um, You know, it is what it is, but a lot's happened. Um, One of the things that's happened is Yoga Alliance, which is um, a foundation, they sort of kind of manage the... um, yoga teachers, Mm -hmm. they have decided uh, to allow permanent virtual teacher trainings going forward. They weren't sure. They allowed it for 2022, 2023, and they decided that it's a permanent thing going forward. So that sort of solidified one of my decisions. Um, Because what it does is it really allows me to capture more people you know, all over the place. And it's a little more legwork for me up front. Mm -hmm. The setup is pretty intense for me. Um, But, you know, I've kind of figured it out and you can see I, you know, I'm I'm more relaxed on camera now. It's it's a thing, you know, I mean, you could probably tell everybody about this, Jill. Like you have to really teach yourself how to, how to be an online presence. That's been like a journey all on its own. Yeah. Well, I can't believe you're back. I'm excited. Hold on. What is your uh, hashtag? I see be well, be fit, be free. And tell us how we can find you on social media and your website before we continue. Yeah, of course. So um, you could find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, leapinglotuswellnessstudio.com. And on Facebook, I've been posting clips of India as best as I can. So if you want to see, if you want to see what I've been up to, you can definitely check out Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, Leaping Lotus Wellness Studio. I am also on LinkedIn, same, Leaping Lotus Wellness Studio. You can reach me at leapinglotusfit at gmail.com. And you can check out my website, leapinglotusfit.com. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you for being here for joining us. And we're excited to have you back. So let's uh, continue the conversation because we're going to talk about Ayurveda. How is it connected to yoga, yoga therapy? Do you want to focus on India first? I'll just be quiet. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, India is amazing. Um, it was my third trip, third time in India. Yeah. And I'm actually going back in January, oh but, I'll, but I'll save that. I'll save that. I know. Um, it was great. It was wonderful. I came back with, I think my biggest takeaway. So I'll, first of all, I'll tell you guys what I was doing. So I was in a clinical setting working in an Ayurvedic hospital for about a month. As I mentioned, we had to, um, we had to complete a certain amount of uh, inpatient hours because, you know, th- there's stuff here. There's, you know, NAMA is one of the governing boards of Ayurveda here in the United States. And um, we're really trying to 
sort of bridge this Eastern and Western thing, as you mentioned, you know, in my fabulous introduction, Jill. Um, so we were in a hospital working. I mean, it was theory. So we were in a classroom learning. And then for about four hours of the day, we were with patients. Um, it's for, it's a walk-in clinic. I mean, it, there's a hospital where people stay, but it's a walk-in clinic. So the cases, we were just seeing cases and cases and cases of, you name it, we saw it. Um, blindness, diabetes, neuropathy, Parkinson's, um, depression, anorexia. Um, I mean, it, it's, and it was interesting because I noticed, I'm like, wow, it's not, I mean, yes, we could say certain things are here in the U.S., but it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, stress is everywhere. Stress is everywhere. Um, a lot of diabetes cases, which were, were really interesting to see. And the way they treat them was like, you know what my biggest takeaway was, Jill? I, I'm going to go right. I'm going to tell you right now. The seamless flow between allopathy, which is sort of the traditional medicines called allopathy, and uh, Ayurveda, which is an alternative medicine route. Ayurveda, by the way, is a complete medical system. Thank you for explaining that. Yep. Yes, it's a complete medical system. Um, it covers, it's, it, it's actually a really vast medical system. I can go into more detail about that, but I will tell you my takeaway first. Um, there was a flow between all doctors and it was very patient centered. It was very caring. It was very nurturing. Whatever the patient needed is what they did. And this, this Ayurvedic doctor who was incredible, it, it was just a seamless flow of, he would call the ho the regular allopathic hospital and refer mm -hmm. people and send them down the road, tell them to come back in a week. And there was a dialogue between them and the regular hospitals as to how to get the patients better. And I thought, man, that is, that's the, the key right there. And there was no, there was no weird, you know, you can't talk to this person. That's not going to work. You can't, you know, there was none of that. It was really beautiful to see how it just was seamless. And it was all about the patients. Mm -hmm. And there was, I'll give you an example. There was a man that walked in pretty severely diabetic. The bottom half of his leg was purple. I mean, blue. Oh. Purple. Oh. And, and he was oozing pus at his heels. We couldn't walk on his leg anymore. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was in a tremendous pain. And he had just gotten a report back from the allopathic hospital that they were going to have to amputate his leg. So he came in as a last resort. And most people come to, to you know, this type of alternative medicine as a last resort. Let's be honest, they do. And so he started him on a protocol of blood purifiers right away, but he said, you know, you have to take care of this infection and it smelled. I mean, we were all sitting, we were all around. We were, like, it was, it was pretty grim. Um, so we started draining it and he started treating it, but he said, you know what? I'm not equipped here. I don't perform, perform surgery in this location. He just seamlessly picked up the phone, made a phone call, talked to the doctor, explained the whole scenario, sent him back to the allopathic hospital. The two doctors were talking back and forth. The man left. He came back a week later and he was better. It was still draining, but they opened up the wound. They took care of it. So we needed wound care. And so there was a whole dialogue back and forth again between mm -hmm. the Ayurvedic doctor and the allopathic doctor. The third week he came back and there was a significant difference in his leg and he will not lose his leg as a result of both of both parties being involved in his treatment. He won't lose his leg. He's got a long way to go. I mean, he's definitely, you know, has, has, but he, and, and the doctor was preparing him. He will have to be admitted for about 14 days um, so that they can kind of get the systemic and uh, blood you know, the blood needs to be cleaned. That's the, that's what the step is, but they have to prep him for that. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is they worked together. 
Do you see the pause in my silence? They work together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was really, I mean, that's just huge because we don't see that here. Yes, you know, let's be honest, we don't see that here. And I think if I can add more, that was a great example of what I witnessed and what, I, and there were many cases of what I saw, but you know, complementary alternative medicine isn't here to take away from allopathy. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Like it's impossible. Guess what, doctors? We need you. Yeah. You know, guess what, Western doctors? You 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 are needed, and you have a purpose, and you have you have a role to play. And we're all here to support each other and to work with each other. You do things we can't do, and vice versa. That's the best care for, for any, I call them clients, patients, whatever you want to call them, for people. So that was my biggest takeaway, Jill. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. And you've been growing and expanding. And for those that may not know a little bit of your backstory, could you share, I mean, with all that you do? I mean, there's a plethora of things that you can offer someone. And I know we're going to go down more of the, um, you know, our notes today, but just a little bit of your background. I think it's important to reestablish you if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So I really come from a long history of um, actually pretty big personal training background. I worked in a hospital for many years. I am a registered medical assistant. And so I've, I've run the gamut of working down step down units, uh, post rehab. I've seen, I was exposed to a lot. I was exposed mm -hmm. to a lot and I was kind of always just thrown in situations where I had to figure it out. Um, that was like my biggest blessing though. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, what, what my takeaway, I mean, I was probably in that personal training realm for like, oh my God, probably close to 20 years was that it left people kind of hanging um, and they didn't know where to go or what to do next. And, and you know, then there's like, um, well, what do I do? And in most cases, they do nothing. That's usually what ends up happening. Or, and so I was seeing the pattern of, okay, then they get bored or then they get re-injured. And so what do we do to kind of keep this protocol going? And that's really how I expanded into the Eastern side, which is yoga, yoga therapy, which is phenomenal. And now more recently Ayurveda, but now they're all seem, they're seamless to me. I don't really separate them. They all fall under one umbrella. So yes, it's a lot of little kind of avenues, but it just sort of makes my, my pot bigger, you know, to, to kind of delve into, but it, it all falls under, under, a care system for people, a wellness care system for people. Yeah. Well, let me also point out uh, the best forms of contact for you. LeapingLotusFit.com. Yep. Uh, phone number, uh, social media, and then we'll continue. Okay. So I'll, you know what? I'll give everybody my phone number again, please. And you can text this phone number as well. 201-903-5028. Call. You can send messages. Um, if I don't get back to you, I am with a client, but I will get back to you during business hours. I promise. Perfect. You can also email me, leapinglotusfit at gmail.com. Awesome. Thanks so much. And in continuing with today's conversation, uh, we'll talk more about uh, all that you have here. You have your winter wellness retreats, upcoming programs. And uh, did you want to talk more about the CAM, you know, the uh, complementary and alternative medicine? Yes. So CAM is actually, I mean, if you Google CAM, it's a pretty wide, and it, and it does exist, you know, the, the actual, the CDC recognizes this. It's a, it's a recognizable organization. Okay. And there's, a, they have a flow chart and there's two medical systems that are complete medical systems that fall under CAM. One is Ayurveda and the second one is Chinese medicine. Okay. Um, okay. They are, they run complete medical systems, meaning we start, we can treat the whole body. And I, let me explain a little bit about um, the difference between a CAM practitioner and an allopathic practitioner. Okay. So we see health as the person's in, in its whole state, 
meaning from an Ayurvedic definition, meaning the person's, the state of their physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, all of their bodily functions, all of their emotional functions, all of their mental functions as a whole. And they're, they're all flourishing and working in harmony together. Allopathy sees health as the, re the alleviating of symptoms. So when the symptom is relieved and you get better, that's, that's pretty much where they drop off. But they did their job. So you mm -hmm. see where we can really kind of come together. Because we take it, we take it to the next level. When that person's symptoms are alleviated, Western medicine says, yes, you're good mm -hmm. and you don't need treatment anymore. We say, but you're not back to that whole state of wellness. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. Yeah. And we could support each other so well in this. And there's plenty to go around. No one's going to take anybody's job. No one's going to take anybody's money out of their pocket. No, like there's like, it's really a perfect, perfect program. It works amazing because we need medicine. We need mm -hmm. modern day medicine. Of course we do. It's kind of crazy to think that we're, that it, you know, we're going to abolish the medical system. That's absolutely never going to happen. But our, our complementary alternative medicine offers support. I think yeah. that's yeah. the biggest thing. We offer support. Um, for example, yoga falls under complementary alternative medicine, uh, meditation, aromatherapy, acupuncture, chiropractors, um, mental health practitioners. A lot of these things all fall under camp. People don't know this. Mm hmm so my wish is that all complementary alternative systems be expo be available to everyone and for the people that can afford them, make them affordable like through insurance. Massage also falls under complementary alternative medicine and who couldn't use a massage? Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. So we take, we take health one step, I don't know, Maybe that's an unfair statement. I was going to say one step further, but but the vi the vision of it is is not just to alleviate your symptoms, but to get you back where you're radiating, where you're really vital. There's there's a vitality to a, to a human life, so that you're thriving. Mm -hmm. um, and every we look at everything as as silly as a hiccup. You know the things that we see is oh I've had a cough for a month. You know, the things that, that get sort of swept under the rug and unnoticed, those are those are, are indicators that something's going wrong. Mm -hmm. And those are places where we can really kind of offer some support. I mean, yes, there's herbs and, you know, we can talk about that. There's, there's a million combinations, but there's also breathing exercises, meditation exercises, movement. I can't tell you how many times I saw this doctor in India. And it's so funny, like you would think in India, you know, India is not Ayurveda. You know, it's just interesting. People are eating street food, people are going to bed late, people, you know, it's lifestyle habits. It's just it's just what we do. Yeah. And in almost every case, it was very interesting to see him say reduce the weight, what, you know, there was always a dietary protocol. There was always a sleep protocol. There was always, um, you know, a stress reduction protocol of some sort. And in, in Ayurveda, the yoga is given as part of the medical treatment. You know, so it's interesting because when I left the United States, you know, everybody was like, oh, are you going to take your yoga mat? And I'm like, no, I'm not taking my yoga mat. And they looked at me like, what do you mean? And I said, well, there's, there's no yoga studios in India. And like, I got, I got like deer in the headlights. Yeah. <laughs> because that's, that's the, you know, the conception is like India is full of yoga studios everywhere, but, but that's not, that's not the case. It's part of their daily routine, mm -hmm. you know? So when they're waking up doing whatever, it's part of their morning practice, they're doing yoga at home. Got it. 
Yeah, they're doing yoga as part of, you know, like their wake up or their bedtime routine or, you know, however they're fitting it into their day. It's like brushing their teeth. Got it's it. Like, it's a habit. It's, it's yeah, like that. Got it. Okay. Wow. And you have a retreat coming up next January, is it? Yeah. Was so it? January, 2024, I have, an, I have an India retreat coming up. Okay. <laughs> going back. We're going back. Tell um, me, tell me, how could people get involved? What is it about? And yeah. my gosh, we're almost out of time. I'm sorry, because we had a late start today. So, oh, wow. Wow, yeah. wow time flies. Um, yes, yeah, so you can check everything out on the website, leapinglotusfit.com. All of the retreat details are on there. We are, the retreat starts January 19th, and it's a two-parter. So you could join one part, the other part, or both. Okay. Um, everything is outlined. Everything is outlined on the website and you can contact me 201-903-5028. Perfect. Uh, but just in cur curious, so people can still sign up to come on the retreat with you. Yes, we have, a, we have, I mean, we're pretty full, but we do have some okay. spots available. Um, it's a good time now is November because we have to start looking at airfare and we have to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, so yeah, check it out and also check out my upcoming yoga teacher training. I am rolling out round two of my 200 hour yoga teacher training program, which will be a hybrid this time. What I'm doing this time, just so everybody knows, is I'm offering it um, a little bit more a la carte at, by modules. Okay. Because because I realized, Jill, not everybody wants a full certification. Not everybody wants to teach yoga. Not everybody, but people just want the information. Mm -hmm. So you can hop on for a module. And there's a certificate of completion after the module. Like, let's say you just want to learn some breathing techniques. You know, you can join us just for that. And, and then you can join us for the full certification if you choose. Again, all the outline, all the program outline is explained on the website. And it's also on my social media. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me, leapinglotusfit.com and call me 201-903-5028. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I'm glad you're back. Excited to have you here. I'm looking forward to working with you again. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.